All right. So first thing that's vitally important are these champion cards that everyone starts with. We're using the demo version where each of the two sides has four already drafted for them to have a semi-reasonable team. These cards, as they come into play, are not played. They're not in your hand. They're not in your deck. They have nothing to do with the deck building mechanism other than the fact that they might show up in the trade row. You can acquire them and they will go instantly into your champion pile but they were, quote, not played there. That's an important distinction that we made today. All right. In order to actually use one of them, you must pay power. Each one of the cards has a attack stat, a power required to use it, and a defense stat. That middle number is how much power you have to play during your turn to put them on the board and move them. So the first time I pay 3 power for a Shadow Caster, I would take the Shadow Caster, drop him onto my summoning portal here for the yellow player, and then take my turn with him. A turn with a character is an attack and a move in any order. The movement is up to 3 spaces by default, and then the attack depends on whether they're ranged or melee. Melee character can only hit the 6 hexes around it. A ranged character like the Shadow Caster can shoot up to 3 spaces. A shadow caster can shoot from here to this guy because he has an open line of sight around this blank tile. But if the shadow caster was here, a forest blocks line of sight. If I had a champion here and the shadow caster was here, he cannot shoot my runic lycanthrope. He would have to shoot the Ascara of Fate because I am body blocking with my own people. On the other side of things, if your own unit is in the way, he just ducks. So you can totally shoot over your own people, no problem. Good so far? Oh. Sure. Line of sight, honestly, not that important and not that big of a deal. Um, forest tiles, the only other thing they do are it takes two movement points to enter a forest tile. Once you are in the forest, if you want to continue along the forest, it's still two points per, but it's only one point to get out of. Into a normal tile, that is. If at any point during the game you end a champion's movement on top of a treasure, you will pick up that tile. You'll just want to hit one like you're drawing a single card, so it'll put it in your hand and then you can secretly look at it. It'll make sure it doesn't show anything to me and flash information or anything. Treasure tiles are one-use things during the game that you're like, ah, I need to give a champion more movement and get somewhere important. I need to respond to an attack and surprise you by having extra defense this turn or an extra strike back. A strike back means that you deal damage to the enemy when they're hitting you. Normally, if you are attacking me, I do nothing but sit there and die. If I have strike back, I can kill you with me. If you hit me with a ranged character and I have a melee, strike back does nothing. Unless you were actually adjacent to me when striking, which you wouldn't have to be but could be. If you use a ranged character against a ranged character and I have the ability to give them strike back with a treasure, I can fire back from distance and kill them both. Alright, so that's general combat, command to move them, 3 is the default movement rate. In order to kill something, you just have to meet or exceed its defense stat. You'll notice the Bringer of Despair over there on the yellow side has a very huge amount of power on defense, but takes a lot to move, and it powers up all your other champions for the entire turn. Speaking of champions, this cultist is a champion. His little card over here is missing champion in the middle because they didn't load in the right artwork. I'm tempted to fix that for them and send it back. They were saying, oh, we didn't have that fixed. Well, I have the right artwork, so I'm tempted to fix it for them. But it is a champion. You can command cultists. Uh, things that buff champions can buff them except for constructs. You can't equip a construct to a cultist. You can have any number of cultists on the field. They're just a two attack and one defense dude. You can use them to control zones with pure volume of people. Or to pick up stuff, or whatever. Or body block. I love using them to body block against ranged characters just by having a wall of cultists in front of my person I care about. 
It's actually very frustrating from the other side and hysterical. All right, so these three red zones are shrines. You can move directly on top of a shrine. It's not like it's not a space, but they are the objectives of the game. If at the end of the turn, you have more pieces touching or adjacent to the shrine than your opponent, you will get one point per shrine you control. It's a race to 15 total points. Let's look through the abilities of the two times, the two sides. The yellow people have Hadron Smithy. After he moves and attacks, if any enemy champions are still alive adjacent to him, he can move them up to two spaces. It's very flexible in which direction he smacks them, but he's good at, like, you have two people clustered on a shrine, he walks up, knocks them both back without even having to kill them, and now he has control of it. The Mechana Initiate does not suck in this game. Somehow. That seems like a mistake in my opinion, but whatever. If you play a Mechana card, he gets plus two to his movement and can move five spaces, so he's very mobile and very fast. A 5-3 is reasonable, but not particular beefy. Only two power to command. You've got your Shadow Caster. The Shadow Caster is ranged 3-4. There's not a lot of things you can kill with three power, but you can use multiple people to hit the same guy on the same turn and take them down. Shadow Caster is very good at helping with that. Or if you can buff him by putting constructs on him that increases attack, he becomes a very lethal ranged character. Other really cool thing about him is the yellow player starts with a heavy instead of a militia in their start deck. Bringer of Despair, that big power boost to all your champions, but four power to command, and you need enough power to command other things to really get full use of his plus five to other people afterwards. If you can get free uh, activations, or if you can just have a ton of power on a single turn, he is your win button for the yellow army. Some people seem to hate him and think he's completely useless. Some people, like me, think he's actually on the overpowered side. You just have to build appropriately to make him work. But those big turns he does work are huge. All right, now for the blue side. Blue side has Runic Lycanthrope. If you play a lifebound card, could be a construct or a hero, but not a champion, you get plus five power to him. Otherwise, he's a three six with two. He's just your little movementy guy. Does a thing. Askara of Fate has this cool secondary ability that if you've played an Enlightened card this turn, you can command it for free. And it's a 4-5. Nice, solid, nothing great, nothing bad. Arha Templar, 9-6. Costs 3 to command. He's the big winner on this side of the field, in my opinion. He's also got this slay effect. If you kill an enemy champion, even if it's a cultist, you get to command someone else for free. The Arha Templar's job tends to be to kill something to set up the flytrap. The flytrap, which is either really important or really unimportant, depending upon how you build your deck and play your game. It is a 6-4-6, six, six, so it's a lot like that Bringer of Despair where it's tough to command, but the Arha comes with a natural way to command your flytrap built in by killing stuff. If you have played a lifebound card, it becomes ranged. Six damage on a ranged character is huge. It also has this nice slay ability. If the Flytrap Witch kills someone, you get to draw a card in the middle of your turn. All right, those are the two sides. What do you think of the champions? And which side do you want to play, yellow or red, or ye yellow or blue? Well, uh, the blue one's already in front of me, so I'll go ahead and do that right. indeed. So set your color to blue, and I will set my color to yellow. You'll just click on your banner in the top right. There we go. All right, so all is good on that side, and blah, blah, blah. Then let's look through this opening center row. Good, we have at least some ambush effects. Ambush is the new cool keyword they've put into the Ascension Tactics. It is effectively like an empower where when you buy it, you get a thing. Some of them are literally empower, by the way. Empower or ambush banish a card you played the Flourishing Druidus here is a good example. Um, flanking Askara, acquire a Mystic or Heavy for free, and when you play it on future turns, you get plus three power and plus one movement. Pretty solid. Void Initiate is exactly what he always has been. Cordite Mechanodon is three power, and champions that have constructs get plus five and become steamrollers. Flourishing Druidus is just a weaker version of its original self. Snapdragon, this one's pretty sweet. 
you equip it to a hero, or a champion rather, and they get plus one damage, plus four defense, but when you put it into play, you can acquire another hero for free. Note that that's hero, not champion. Alright, then we have the Verdant Elemental, another ambush. Ambush, immediately command a cultist for free. And two power, command a cultist for free this turn. And we've been talking with the designers today about this this turn versus just command a cultist. Some things say command instantly, some say command this turn. They should all say command instantly. Everything has to be resolved immediately. We're going to change those wordings. Alrighty, um, I seem to have play all, draw, and intern on my screen. Do you have those on yours, the little blue buttons on the right side? Uh, what now? Yeah, okay, I'm going to hit intern here because for some reason I have the buttons. It should be giving you a turn. Do you now have the buttons? I'm not sure what buttons you're talking about. So. On your menu, on the right side of your screen, you should see three blue buttons that say play all, draw one card, and in turn. Oh, you know what? They're kind of cut off on my screen. Can I see the, the edges of them. The top one says play all. What does the middle one say? Draw one card. Then the, the last one says in turn. Yep, and I have no idea how to move them. Uh, it might just be like the resolution of my screen or something like that. Could uh, totally be. I have no idea how to move them. I've been told that they should be in some way movable. I okay. don't... Go ahead and hit play all. Yep. And then it'll put all of your cards in your played area and resolve them in whatever order. When playing with this mod, using those script buttons are really important because they do a lot of steps for us, including scoring. So even if you are have, like turn dependent, I need to play this first, just hit play all and then explain what you're doing. Okay. So for your turn, you have four runes and three power. Don't forget about your command banner. It'll take getting used to. Okay. We got four and three right now. And then hit the take button for anything you want to buy, and it'll buy it instantly and then replace it. There's a take button? There's a take button underneath each one of these cards. Oh, okay. That's what the little button means. All right. I'll get the void initiate first. Okay. Three left. Got excited to see Scrapbot's art. Yeah. yeah. He has a new price. He has a new price and totally different power versus rooms thing going on there. All right, I'm going to take the Worshing. All right, and now banish one of the cards you've played, so pick it up and just drop it over this portal, and this portal will suck it into the nether region from which it came. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think the militias might be a little more valuable in this They game. are a little more valuable than standard. So I'll banish an apprentice. Isn't that satisfying? It is. I stole those um, little portals for mine because I like that thing. Just drop it in and it's gone. I still have one, so I'll get this innovative aspirant. Very nice. I think they need to readjust the cost of Mystic and Heavy, but we haven't discussed that yet. Oh, yeah? Because the, like, the relative cost of all these other things, these are basically two and one cost cards now. Oh, I see. But they um, shouldn't be spammable either. So I don't know. I'll make them consider that. Maybe make both of them twos. Oh, I've got three power. That means that I can... Uh, totally command to anything but the uh, flytrap. My, my champions, right? Absolutely. I already forgot. I think I just... Aha, uh -huh, Tim. 
Templar. What do I drag it over to the blue? You drag it over to your blue portal and make him move up to three spaces. I mean, right now it makes a lot of sense to move three towards something, either towards a treasure or a shrine or whatever. Um, later in the game, I will warn you, a beginner mistake is moving the maximum distance every single turn. Sometimes that's not the best case. Gotcha. I'll just move towards this treasure for now, and that's probably the end of my turn, right? So I can hit this bottom button yep. over here. Yep, you can hit that bottom button, and it'll pass everything. It'll clean up your play yeah, area yeah. and draw you a new hand. It'll also score yep. points. If your champions are in range of shrines, you'll automatically score points when you hit that button. There are three shrines out here? Is that what these red, red dudes are? Correct. Okay. All right, now I also have the 4-3 split with one small difference. My command banner says on my very first turn of the game I get an extra two power. That's just to help me. You get first access to the shrine. I get one more unit than you on the board, essentially. Okay. Well, this Verdant Elemental Command Occultist for free, I really like that one, so I'm going to take him and immediately command a cultist and have him run up this right side towards the treasure. I also want to point something out real fast that I forgot to mention earlier. Do you see these spaces at the bottom of your row? Uh, yeah, like the half hexagons? Yes, or well, actually the, the full ones, just the very bottom row, okay. like right here you have two underneath your forest. You're only supposed to have one. It's a little bit longer of a board than it's supposed to be, so those are cut off. Pretend they're gone. Which ones are gone? Um, the last ones that you've got here. Oh, okay, all of those. All of those are not actually there. All right. Off limits. Remind me when I try to move the one, I guess. Will do. It should mostly not be a thing that matters. It's just, you know, there. And then I have to make a critical decision. There are so many things out here that are very, very good cards. Like Master Dartha is a champion that you can command for free every single turn. And when you buy him, you command something else for free and can put him in play immediately. So buying power doesn't suck. But these flanking Ascaras, extra movement, extra power, ugh. They're really great too. So I'm going to take a flanking Ascara because it comes with a Mystic or a Heavy. I'll take one Mystic with it since there are so many big cards out here. And then I'll spend my 5 power finally. I'm going to have my Hadron Smithy run straight towards the center since that's what he loves to do. And I will have my Mechana Initiate do the same because I know I'm going to have a five power turn next turn. Hmm. What if five and three? Is that enough to kill a uh, Templar? Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to go with it. And in turn. Got four and three again. Did you see the Dogs of War that were replaced, by the way? Uh, no. Gotcha. Sounds pretty good. I'm, I'll just take it. Well. There are actually a lot of good cards out here. I will be happy no matter what you leave me. Yeah, it seems that way. It seems like uh, they, they help you as well. It says equipped champions. What does that mean? So if you have a construct like the Snapdragon, when you have a Snapdragon, I'm just doing this for a demo, I'll put it back. I put it under the guy I want to equip it to, and I hit U to send it behind, and it buffs him up. But he's now an equipped champion. Okay, so equipped means that there's a construct attached to it. Yep. Okay. Um. My guys have all sorts of stuff where they want to do equipment more than yours do. 
but obviously buffing your good guys is always good. All right, I'm gonna take this crap bot. You know that. Oops. I've got three power. I'll command my runic lichen throat. Or do I want to? Oh, I guess if I want to command my Arha Templar, I spin that three, and I can yep. move him over to this treasure, right? Sure can. All right, I'll do that instead. So, move him over here. Just hit one on it, draw it to your hand, and then flip it. And then that's something you can use at any point during your turn to either give movement, power, defense, strike back, whatever, to one of your guys. You see what it is, or? Uh, I can if you take it out of your hand. Just leave it in I... your hand. Okay. Until you want to use it. And, like, say I walk up to you with a hero that doesn't have enough power, I might use a treasure from my hand to buff it, then you could use a treasure from your hand to buff yours in response, etc., etc. So, does this stay in my hand, or does this, yep. like, go It just floats in your hand until you use it one time. Okay, so I can hit in turn here? Sure can. You've commanded, you've bought. Looks like that's that. Okay. Alright, so play all. I have the 4-4 four, four split since I have a heavy infantry in my deck from my Shadowcaster, which I think I forgot to consider last turn, but it's going to work perfectly fine for me anyway. And... I'm going to risk it and take the flanking Ascara for 3 which comes with a mystic. Ooh, Dragon's Eye, plus four, plus four, and draw a card each time you kill something. That doesn't stink either. Then with my four power, I am going to have a cultist of all things walk over here and pick up a treasure. Find out what that is. And then I am going to have my Mechana Initiate walk up to the center so that way I can score a point. And I'm done. And it gave me a point on the honor point counter because I controlled the center shrine with my initial. You just have to um, be adjacent to one of the shrines to get a point at the end of your turn? You must have the most adjacent to it at the end of your turn. So if you had had one adjacent, I wouldn't have gotten anything. Okay, and then you're going to score one point at the end of each turn every time. Until you either kill my guy so I'm not adjacent or have equal or more there. Okay, well, I got a feeling I'll lose. So that's okay. That is okay. okay so I, no, I don't want to play all because I don't want to reveal my treasure, right? Uh, it will not play your treasure, it will only play cards. Oh, wow, not that. That treasure will just sit there in your hand and be ignored until you decide to do it. Right, so I'm actually going to two, two, three, four. Let's see what I wanted to get. Okay. Oops, Yeah, I'm going to banish one of my apprentices, actually. Okay. So I got three and three, right? That is one, two, three, four still. Oh, the win initiate. Banish a card in my hand or discard pile. Yep. So oh, you yeah, banished one, but Druidus is also a mystic equivalent, so... I see four runes, and I see three power. 
84 rooms. One on the Void Initiative, oh, one on the Apprentice. Oh, okay. I got confused. Okay. Would you like your other Apprentice back? No, 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 no. Still no. happy? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I think I got confused because I had already planned on taking this garden attendant. Alright, so that has an ambush effect to let you banish another one of your cards. Yeah, I'm going to banish another apprentice. Which is effectively in power renamed to be consistent with every other card in the set. Yeah, that card in attendance is pretty good, especially with your Ascara of Fate. That'll be a free play every time you use it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then you have right. two left if you'd like a heavy infantry. Yeah. Or you can just go to your command phase with three power. You get a heavy one up. Power's kind of important. The board is board. the only thing that matters. I do have three. So you can uh, use anything but your fly trap. Right. Uh, I guess I'll get my. Uh, up there. I'll dump them right here. All right. And I hit in turn, right? Sure do. All righty. Well, first thing I've got is my champions have plus one movement and plus three power this turn. I have three power with this hand to work with, so I think I'm going to surprise ambush you. I'm not going to initiate one movement, two movement, three and four since he has an extra thing. And since he has plus three power, he has a total of eight, and I can kill your Arha Templar unless you have defense. Uh, oh, I do. Would you like to use it now or hold on uh, for somewhere else? Ah, uh, how do I throw that bad boy out there? Boom. So you just flow it like that and then you throw it in the void. It's gone forever, but uh, you survived my attack. Templar lives to fight another day. All right. I'm thinking about using mine to kill him anyway. Because <laughs> my mechan initiate had five plus three, eight, and you gave him three defense, so nine. I don't really want to waste this chip right now, but I also know it's going to go really badly for me if I let you start your turn with Arha Templar right next to my guy. You'll just smack him to death and command for free. So I will also use my treasure to give him the one needed to be lethal. Alright, so your Arha Templar goes back to the off the battlefield, and now he is defeated. And I did not explain defeated to you early. But we just tap him sideways. You can't command him until he turns right side up again. And that happens at the end of your turn phase, so he'll come back after one turn, basically. He'll just miss a turn of using him. Alright, well that was all of my power. All of my champion effects. I don't even control the center, but I have four runes to spend. And I have no regrets here. The dragon's eye is amazing. End my turn. Back to Mr. Sunny. All right. There's me two, three, four, five, and three. That seems yeah. like a great choice. And then with three, I guess I'll... It's Scara of Fate. No, wait. Yeah, I'll throw up the runic light in here. Are you sure about that? Uh, I mean, why would I Because you've got know? three power, and the Ascara of Fate can move three forward either direction to kill my mech and initiate. I only have three defense. 
Oh, okay. If you want to leave that... my guy close to you, I could potentially just close in and chop down your champions one after another each turn. Oh, I don't want to do that. All right, so I so what's the what's the word called? I activate and and yeah, okay. I go one, two, three. Yep. I have no treasure, so there's no surprises. My mechan initiate has been defeated. My uh, four attack is better than your three yep. defense. Four is better than three. And then Silent. you spent and you used power. One left doesn't do anything. Oh, and now your Arha righted himself, so you can use him on your next turn. Look at that. All right, so my champions are a little faster and powerful this turn with flanking. I have three to spend and four to command with. I am going to use two to command this Hadron Smithy to jump mm, onto this treasure here. And I'll draw that, see what I ended up with. Then with my remaining two, my Shadowcaster and Bringer of Despair are too expensive, so I'll just command this pathetic little cultist to step over here and get me a point. Because those are sort of why we're playing the game. Alright, let's see here. Amethyst Defender, give my guys more power, draw a card. Land Talker's a lot of money and can potentially boost my champions. Um, I don't have four to spend, so I can just ignore all of those, so I'll take the Land Talker. And that taps me out of resources, so we're back to Mr. Sunny. What does this uh, negative two on the all-seeing eye mean? Oh, Blue. so you command oh, them for two less. So you could put it on like an Ascara or a Lycanthrope to make them free to command every turn. Or you could make Arha Templar only cost one, or Flytrap only cost two. When you buy the card, that one and only time when you buy it is the ambush effect to command something for free and enlighten to get plus five. Oh, okay. Sounds pretty good to me. Let me hit play all. One, two, three, four, six, seven. And then the other thing I want to make sure you see is that Master Dartha is another unit. And he's a free unit every turn. And he commands something for free when you buy him. Because he's a champion. Yeah. Oh. He is sort of the thing I've been rushing to get to and did not get to yet. Okay, well, I like being to him. Everything is good. There are no wrong choices. What's that? I said everything is good. There are no wrong choices. All right, well, I mean, if we're going to... Way that you want that. That not going to my. Oh, it, it's the, it's a champion. So. Yeah, it's straight to play. It's not a card. Quote quote. Okay, and it's free to. So yeah. you can deploy him and move him right away because he's free. But before you do that, technically you have to do the ambush effect. Command one of your champions for free. Okay. Well, how about I? get my flytrap witch out there since it's so pricey. It is pricey and now it's free. Uh, oh, I don't know where to put it really, but put it there. And right, so I commanded that. I'm going to command this dude. In there. And then you have two power from your banner, so you can put out either the Runic or Occultist. Okay. And now you have a whole bunch of stuff on the board. Yeah, man. That went fast. Uh, I guess I'll move him here. And in my turn, right? You had one room remaining, so yep, that looks like an intern to me. 
All right, so my turn, I'm going to hit play all, and then I'm going to execute them how I want them. So this verdant elemental allows me to command a cultist for free. I am actually going to forgo the point this turn in favor of this treasure, because those can be really important. Then I have four power to work with, and I will get my Mechana Initiate back on the board, head in the right direction, and I will get a Cultist with my remaining two heading the wrong direction, but it's a direction, so that'll have to work. I have used all my power, I have five to spend, and I like everything out here. The Dogs of War letting me draw cards if I kill stuff. I feel like I'm already building towards a very aggressive deck. The all-seeing eye making it so that my bringer of despair... I have to do that one. I have to make my bringer cheaper because it makes this deck really nonsense. So let's take the all-seeing eye and it lets me command one of my champions for free. I will command the Bringer of Despair to enter the battlefield in his terrifying, uh, shaking way. Which means I probably should have done that first and activated a different guy, but I'm still gonna go with it. So that's what I did. And I'm done. Did you notice Setra's a champion as well? The ambush is means when I acquire Cetra. Correct. When you acquire Cetra, if your opponent had any equipped constructs, they're all destroyed. It's okay. ranged and it always shoots everything that it can see. Okay. If you can so, put constructs on her, she's pretty pretty sick. Go ahead and hit play all. Uh, with my void initiate, I want to banish something from a discard pile. I just grab one. Do that right? Yep. Okay. Hey, I don't have any equipped champions. Need to acquire one of four less for free. Oh. Got three runes and five power, and I'm acquiring a cost for free. Go ahead and get Stra. You have a lot of units. Good, right? That is very good. All right. So, All right. that means I've played a lifebound card this turn too, right? You have not played a lifebound card. The, the champions do not count as cards for those things. The cards are just to remind you what their minis do. You're really buying the miniature. Okay, I'm uh, okay. That's that goofiness in the terminology that we're going to clean up and make sure that's clear. Yeah, I would recommend it. Because the champion is not a card in your deck. You buy it in the center row like normal, but it's a completely different entity, which is why it's straight to play and isn't actually, quote, playing. Okay, but I played an enlightened card, which means my Ascara of Fate moves for free. Commanded for free. Which one is my Ascara of Fate? It's over here. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, check out this Hedron Smithy. He's got seven defense. Which is I can't I can't compete with that. I don't think. Not unless you gang up on him and hit him with Dartha and the Ascara of Fate. Oh, yeah, because this guy moves four free. So that would be four and four. That would be eight. Yep. So basically your choice is either put Ascara on a shrine and Dartha on a shrine and take two points, or nuke my smithy and get him out of here. Which is what my mistake was last time. I should have not commanded that extra cultist. I should have commanded the smithy. 
Because I can move, just for example, I can move my Ascara Fate here, yep. right? That would be a valid three movement for him. Right. Uh, and then my Master Dartha could go here. Sure could. And uh, then they both hit my Hadron, if that's what you'd like, and I'll remove them. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, goodbye, Hadron Smithy. Turn the card. I don't get access to him until a little while from now. Alrighty, and then I have uh, three actual runes still unspent and five actual power unspent. Everything you've done so far was free. Yeah. That feels nice, doesn't it? at all my stuff that I can do. Use... three to get my Arha Templar back into play. Okay. Three. Let's go to the middle. You've got two left for the runic or occultist. Now let's move the runic guy here and get a point, right? Yep. And then three runes to spend. Sure. I like the Amethyst Defender. That sounds good. Looks like a Spike Vixeny. Pretty great. That's what uh, it is. Now it's pretty great. Now I'm done, right? Now you're done. And you're going to get a point. Huzzah. Look at that. All right. So for Four. me, I have a super debate. I have to decide between benefits over and over and right now or really going for the super win here and I think you have so many guys on the field that the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to play my all-seeing eye to the Mechana initiate so he costs nothing to activate now I'm going to hit play all because now my flanking Iskara gives my champions plus three power and plus one movement. My Hadron Initiate can move four spaces and go one, two, three, four. And he has a grand total of five, six, seven, eight power to hit your Runic Lycanthrope. Uh, I think I got kicked off. Oh, you did get kicked off, so I will just stop and wait for you to come back to the server. And then we'll talk about your runic like and throat getting killed. Right. Will it let me like just yep. back on? You can just go right back in, and it'll either directly connect you immediately, or you'll have to pick the thing out of the menu. It'll probably try to reconnect you. It claims you were back. All right. You are back. Okay. So what I did was move my mechana initiate from here up to here with that plus one movement. And then with that plus three power, he can kill your runic lycanthrope. And you have no treasure, so it looks like that's the end of that. Bye bye runic. However, I wasted a really good construct on him, and if he dies with his three defense, then uh, the construct goes back to my discard. So that was why I was debating what to do with him. And then I have... How did you um, rotate my card there? Do what? To indicate that we killed... Did you say how or why? How? 
Uh, Q and E are your rotates. Okay. And then uh, I have two runes to spend and three power to actually use. With that three power, I'm going to command this cultist to get back on the point that gives points. In fact, I'm going to command him to come up here and be a little closer to the center as well. Maybe my cultist will give a surprise over the wall someday. Maybe not. And two to spend. I have a feeling that I actually... Oh yeah, there's no reason not to do Flourishing Druidus. It just replaces an apprentice with a better card. And I will end my turn. Back to you, sir. All right. I have a construct here. Play all I guess. Play this construct underneath any of my. Yep, any guy field. you want. You can even put it on one that's not on the field or one that's defeated. That's good. I like the idea of beefing up my. Uh, etc. a little bit. It wouldn't make how it do I put it underneath? Four power. You hit U, U will stick it underneath. Is that okay? Yep, perfect. Now, right. you just played it, so you get to acquire a hero for free. Yeah, let me see which one I want to do. I'm a Templar, that looks good. It's any hero, though, right? Do what? It's, I can acquire any hero, right? Any hero, correct. Not constructs, but any hero, not champions. the Inferna Templar. Alright. And then get rid of one of the cards you played. Oh. I'll get rid of... Alright. And then you have two runes and four power to spend. It is also worth noting, since you have played a lifebound card, your uh, flytrap witch is ranged. Yes. I don't know if that will actually matter or not, because you have all the ways to control the center anyway. Where is my flytrap witch? I would still have to command it, right? You would still have to command it, so it would take all four of your power to do so. And you can honestly just use Master Dartha for free to come up and smack down my one guy anyway. Yeah. Okay, so let me use my two rooms to get the, the staff here. Solid. Not a bad move, right? That Void Speaker is way too cheap. I didn't even see it. Uh, I played another board card this time. See. Do much for me because I can just move this guy up here. Yep, you'll control the shrine, and unless I use one of my treasures, which I'm not going to do, my initiate is dead. 
So, okay, but like, if I didn't know that you were going to use a treasure, it could have safely me moving my flight trap, which into range to. You could have that. totally finished him off. Yeah. Okay, so instead, I think I'll use my three power to, uh, and my Cetra. Okay. Move him. Her. Threatening that cultist up there, I guess. Alrighty. That's my turn, and now I can un. When you hit in turn, that will come Move back and be ready for your next one. A dog. Alrighty, so I have a ton to spend this turn. Like, a metric ton. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And with my eight to spend, there are some really game changing cards in this deck. I'm debating about settling on two fours that I can already see, or fishing and hoping that I draw into a really big thing if I take, like, the Void Speaker. And do I have any Voids in my discard pile? I don't. I don't think I've bought any Voids either. I'm going to go with what I can see. This Rocket Courier, having that extra mobility I've always found is incredibly useful. That looked like a good card. And then with my other four, I mean the Inferna Templar, both types of resources, or the Seer of the Forked Path to get more mobility. I really value mobility a lot in this game, and I can command cultists right now. Ugh. I only have two power to command stuff otherwise. I am going to go for the Inferno Templar. It's just hard to pass so much resource on a single card. And I banished one of my apprentices. Then with my two power, I can put the Hadron Smithy back on the field and make him start going towards doing something. And I will call it a day. Back to you. You have five points because that cultist up there just keeps racking up a point every time, right? Correct. That's I controlled so the center a couple of times, and that cultist has just been sitting there doing his thing. Right. How oh, do I know the range of... Everything is range three if it says ranged. Okay. All right, well, let me go ahead and just hit play all. So Cetra has extra movement, which is spectacular. Because it is an equipped guy. You have a discard pile, so Void Initiate doesn't suck. Alright, that looks like a really good hand. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. How do I... Cards in my discard pile again. You right click on it and hit search. And then when you see what you want from the menu, pull it to the main board and drop it before you do anything else to it. It's not working for some reason. It's not letting you open up the menu when you right click on it. There it is. Uh, search. There it is. And then just like drag it out here and then put it to the void after it becomes an object because it's just a list while it's in there. Yep. And then you can drop it. Void initiate doing his job well. Yeah. Alright, so. I just got plus one movement. I count and six and four there. Two, three, and four, and then one extra movement for my Cetra, right? Yep. So Cetra can get all the way to this shrine right away. Yeah. So let me go ahead and do that, because I know I want to do that. It makes me a little sad. My cultist never got to do his special thing. And Cetra automatically attacks everything around it that's in range, which is just the cultist. 
but super slaughters him. You did four times the necessary damage. All right. Oh, I played a. You don't have enough power to command but... anything else but Dartha. Because Dartha's free. Dartha could one, two, three. I could come over here. He has four power to my seven and eight defenses. He could oh, well, step to the happens. side and pick up a treasure. He could just keep controlling the point for an extra zone point. Can make it to a treasure? Yep, this one. Oh, because I, I can step into the shrine. The yeah, shrine the shrine's a normal spot. It feels okay. a little weird at first because it's not an obstacle. You know what? I have a feeling that you, could, that you would just come over here and ding me. Oh, he's dying. Might as well come get a treasure, right? Two, three. We got six rooms? I'm going to get the Seer of the Fork Path. Okay. Because I want two... Two cultists. My, my dudes can't stand on... and They can't occupy the same... They can't space. occupy the same space, and that's not a space. So you've basically got this arc that's full movement, or just a little closer to the shrine. There, and... Two? Anything out here across two? Yeah. Very good. I actually really like that Void Rager. Oh, player card you would like. Right, I think I'm done. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to hit play all and then explain what I'm doing with it. First thing I'm doing is playing the flanking Iskara so all my champions are more powerful and have more movement. Then I'm using the Verdant Elementals Command Occultist for free to go one, two... Ooh, that's not as close as I thought it was. One, two, three, four. Does not get me in range of Ascara. Okay. I thought I was going to kill the Ascara, but one, two, three, four does get me into shrine range with my freebie. And then I am going to use two of my six power. Ooh, do I want to use it on him? Or do I want to use. Okay, so I'm either activating another cultist the Hadron and the Initiate, or I'm doing the Bringer and the Initiate. I am going to do the Bringer of Despair first. And he has four movement, so one, two, three, four movement, and he can smack the Ascara of Fate in the face. He does seven damage to her five. Okay. Thank so, you unless your treasure has a defend... There. All good? Question mark? Just want to make sure you didn't have a defend or anything to do, right? No, no. Okay. Then I will use my remaining two power on the Hadron Smithy. One, two, three, four. And I forgot actually the bringer was plus three from flanking. My Hadron has six plus five, so he has 11 power to hit Master Dartha. Please. Goodbye, Master Dartha, and I totally whacked your Arha in the process. 
I'm just knocking things over because there's an actual physics engine here. I should remember that. <laughs> Objects just don't go from one point to another point without passing between. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's turn Master Dartha. And then let's find out what I'm buying because that's all my power done. I have three to spend and I see absolutely... No reason not to take off Cetra's massive defense. So I will buy the Vine Weaver and choose an enemy champion to destroy all constructs attached to it. I choose Cetra. So Cetra is now unequipped. No more free command stuff with the card that's almost certainly in your hand. Hee hee hee. And I spent that, I spent that, so I am done with my two points for the center and the side to the left. For my left, I guess. All you, sir. Oh. Okay. Hard. Or do I just hit one on my deck? Um, or the middle button will draw the card as well. Either way. The middle button only matters if it needs to shuffle your discard pile. So I've got two, two, four. Five to spend yeah. and one four cost for free. Take uh, Dogs of War. Okay, that's a pretty great one. I'm actually really surprised it sat out there so long. Oh, it's He's back. Like, yeah. No, Dogs of War cost four, so I was, I was using my. That was your freebie. Yeah. Then you have five to spend however you wish. this green attendant again. Alright, you can empower away something again. Three left to spend. Yeah. I want this voice speaker. Leave it with two. The heavy. Okay. And now I've got two, three, four. Four power to command champions. All right. Of back and forth to see, like, yep. My uh, Smithy has, in fact, someone was telling me I, I'm gonna just quick real click and see if I can make a thing happen. He was telling me it was easy to do, and I'm not sure that I believe him.
So I'm gonna treasure. One plus one attack. We're gonna ban Cetra. Number mm. four. So, two, three. Yeah. I thought I'd be able to get sort of that. Hold on. No worries. Cetra would also only do five damage. Uh, well, my champions get plus two this turn, so that is five. Isn't it? Well, it's five six with my treasure, right? Oh yeah, it would be six with your treasure, which wouldn't kill anything. Oh yeah, so yeah, not doing that, jeez. So I would keep your treasure, and command someone else instead. Let's see. Your Arhav Templar stands out to me because he's in range of two of my guys yeah. and he gets to command something else for free if he kills one of them successfully. Yeah. So choose what you want to kill and try to be successful. Oh. Come over to your bringer of despair. Oh, not okay. my good guy. And I've got nine to my eight. And it's like well, ten, eleven to my eight. So you kill him. So this guy is going back over here. Sure is. Bringer dead. So now you trigger your slay effect on the Arha Templar. Right. And something else for my fly trap witch. Can it? It is ranged it? this turn, so it could totally hit my guy with its eight power and kill him too. Yeah, you get the Hedron Smithy, right? With yep. Crane. If you move him within three spaces of him, you can totally shoot him down instantly. One, two, three, four, like a plus one movement, right? So. What do you have plus one movement from? Treasure? Is that just for one champion? It's for one champion if you use it, but you haven't used it yet. It's still in your hand, technically. Okay, because I didn't. I didn't. Because you didn't it. do Cetra. You revealed it, but you didn't actually use it. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and... Get your uh, point for it, basically. Yeah, it'll give me a point, right? It sure will. Right. Unless you're doing something to... I am not. I don't have it. And when I defeat an enemy champion, I can draw a card. Sure do. Ooh, hot dog. So you have one and one. <laughs> Room one power. Yes. If you would like, though, you can put that heavy infantry back from where you spent your two runes earlier and upgrade to the uh, shade or something if you prefer. Well, I could have been smart enough to realize that that was enough. Okay. Anyway, gotta learn some. Gotta learn somehow. Sure. Why not? Uh, so I need more than one for the cultist. You. Done, right? Well, that's done. All right, in turn. All righty. Well, first thing I've got is this flanking ass car to make my guys faster and more powerful. Second thing I've got is the dragon's eye to allow me to get um, something fast. And I only have two power to work with, so I'm definitely putting the dragon's eye on mech initiate. So my mech initiate has effectively nine 
and seven. He got a little bit bigger pretty fast. And he can go four spaces. One, two, three, four. Does not quite get me far enough. So let's give him plus two movement then. And go one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that not enough either? All right, let's recount this. He had three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, I really want to kill that fly trap. Fine, I'll use both of my remaining treasure. And move over to here. And yeah. So both of my treasure are down. I hit the fly trap witch for nine damage. 10 damage from that one treasure I just used. You don't have any treasure, so that's lethal and nothing we can do about it. Flytrap goes home. I have slain something, so my Dragon's Eye Construct says draw a card when I slay something. And then I will play it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six runes to spend this turn as a result of that. And what do I want? I like this Commanded Champion for free and I'm afraid of leaving it out there. I also very much like this Dogs of War. I'm going to spend on the Fairy Commander so I get to Commanded Champion for free. I have no Lifebound Champion so I can basically ignore that line. I will command my shadow caster. Go one, two, three, four with him since I have bonus movement. And that was all of that effect and I have one rune. Didn't even look at the replacement but it's not a one runer so done. I'll score my two points for those two controls. I'm playing a what point value? 15. We're starting to get right down to it. Yeah, this car. Which is good, because physically this game probably would have only taken us 30 minutes, and it's double that for TTS stuff. Oh, and you're also teaching me how to play, too. Well, I think teaching you it still would have only taken 30 minutes if you could see everything right in front of you and just pick it up and look at it. I think an experienced player with this game physically, it only takes about 20 minutes for scenario one. Other scenarios might have some more meaty things going on, but I can neither confirm nor deny because we're streaming. I just realized that statement basically says something just by wording it that way. I guess I'll just go ahead and hit play all and sort through it all. I'm kind of used to playing them one. Uh, just hit play all and then sort through them one at a time and verbally yeah. call out what you're doing just because of the it. things. Right, so that's one and a banish, so I'm going to banish. Not that whole just... stack. You have the whole stack. Oh, okay. That could be dangerful. There you go. Yeah, just the apprentice this time. Your deck is much thinner than mine. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to put this guy, the staff, underneath. Okay. Looks like my Templar is already pretty tough, but... Your Templar's defense isn't too hard to overcome, but his attack is spectacular. Put it underneath the, the Templar. Make him a little tougher to kill then. And, and benefit from the double slay ability of command for free and two runes. Yeah. And now he's faster. That's not terrifying at all.
the start of the game. Okay, ranged. Okay, so you can kill whatever you'd like to with the Arha since he has an extra movement now from the innovative. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and command him and move him one, two, three. Okay. And this guy. put the super beat down on my mech and initiate. Unequipping my dragon's eye that I was really looking forward to using more than once. Probably won't now. I get to command another champion for free. Sure do. My lunatic lycanthrope out there. Okay. And move this way. Okay. Uh, Master Darth is free, so I can put him back up. out. Use my three power, so I've still got one, two, one. So I still have two power left, right? You only commanded with two power, so you still have three left, it looks like. No, you used. I got it. You used three on Dartha, and then the two was free. So yeah, you have two left. Right. I think I'll. And another cultist to move here. Give me another point. On the the five runes, buy stuff. I have an equipped champion. Draw a card. Oh, you! I, I can't let you have conduit, Mike. I don't know why. I'm taking it. You could let me have it. It's fine. I don't mind. So, I All get right. to command the champion for free. You sure do. A dog. So you've got an Ascara to use. Cetra hasn't moved, but probably doesn't care about it because he's doing his job gaining points. I guess I'll get my Escara fade out there, right? Absolutely. Not yeah. much reason not to. Especially since you still have enlightened cards coming, you'll be able to play them for free again on next turns. That's all I can do, right? That appears to be everything, but that was a lot of everything. You're having some pretty, pretty big turns, too. Alright, so let's hit play all and take a look here. I have a Verdant Elemental that will allow me to command a cultist for free. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that to pick up this last treasure since I have no tricks in my hand and I want some tricks. Alrighty. And then three, four, five, six to spend, and three, four, five, power. Alrighty. With six to spend, looking at these row, I'm going to take the Amethyst Defender and see what flips. Oh, sure, now Emery's out here. There is the last um, champion in this particular deck. When you oh. acquire him, you immediately put him out adjacent to an enemy, and he can be commanded twice a turn. He has, like, no defense, but Emery goes slice, slice, slice. I guess, actually, she goes slice, slice, slice. They caught power each time you command it? It sure does. And then I will buy the Dogs of War 
finally. Been planning on that for, you know, the whole game, and it just never made sense to do till now. Alright, so now five power to spend. I definitely need to keep my points rolling because you have a big advantage over me, so I'm going to use three of that five on the Shadowcaster. I'm going to spend three of it on the Hadron Smithy. And I just realized your Arha Templar is so close to me that I'm afraid. Because almost anywhere I go, your Arha Templar can walk up to me and smack me in the face. I don't like that. So the Hadron Smithy is going to be real conservative and chill back here. I don't like that. Thanks, Sonny. Uh, double check that that's how I want to do it. Yep. And I am done. So I earned my one point. We're back to you. We're, the game's gone long enough, and I don't have enough of an advantage right now with the 7 to 10 and you having 2 to my 1 for me to feel particularly good about it, because your deck is so much thinner than mine. You have a lot of synergy, and you have 6 champion cards. I only have 4. You cannot use the Snapdragon on Emery, by the way. I I figured. Still uh, good. None so. of my champions have any sort of uh, advantage to being quipped, right? Uh, no, no inherent advantage to it. You just have cards that benefit from having a living equipped champion. Uh, I'll put it under Citra, I guess. Okay. And then acquire a hero for free. Yep. Command up to two cultists for free this turn. Yes, sir. I have any? Uh, two out there. Uh oh. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll march this one. Okay. And then do you want to put a new one out, or keep the one where he is, or adjust him slightly? Keep in mind that uh, Cultist is a champion, so he does get plus one movement if you wanted to move him oh. one more. Yeah, so I, I want to move him over here. I didn't realize they counted as champions. Yep, they sure are. And that card will cool. soon reflect that. I'm actually probably going to be annoyed enough to update my own personal mod with that. Because I have the artwork right here in front of me in the rule book. It's, let's see here. <laughs> Oh, I see why they didn't change the artwork. The cultist isn't a card. He's printed right on the board. Okay. That's why. All right. So Master Darth is a free command, right? Master Darth is a completely free command. I can move it. Four spaces, since you have plus one to everything. Oh, that's true. Or plus five if you give him the Void Rager buff. Two, three... I'll, I'll go four. Stand up, cultist. No sleeping. Yeah. Loa's 
smack, smacking your own guys around. Oh, I see. Um, it is worth noting that the Runic Lycanthrope does have the plus five power because you did play the Snapdragon, which is a lifebound card. It's not specific can, to heroes. Uh, yeah. So I can I can command him because I have enough. Yep. And I I can use I can use the uh, Void Razor on him. Sure can. I can go one, two, three, four, five. Yup. Doubles the power, so it's got six. It's five. It, it's got 11. eight times two. Because he had three plus five for playing the lifebound card. Okay. So he's got eight, and then he double strikes. So he does eight. If he's not dead, he does eight again. He could potentially die to like a strike back, but uh, that didn't happen. My shadow caster just went flying away, as did a bunch of your pieces, because I always grab these things really quickly. And uh, uh, for sportsmanship, there, Curdler. You know what? Here, let me press that button, and now it just reverts my movement of the shadow caster, who I will now take off carefully, not hitting other minis. I so always polite, please. <laughs> I always forget it. I just grab a piece and take it in a straight line to where it belongs and it hits stuff on the way. And uh You have one rune which I didn't think I'd be able to afford it then, but this shard finder compass can. Yep. And then it appears to have given me in turn buttons. So I don't have any control of shrine, so I'm gonna hit in turn and make sure that it gives you the stuff, and then I'm just going to have to get my button. hand back. I just realized that didn't quite work as intended. I have an button, Turner, but, uh... You do? Yeah. Well, stupid game. Did we mess up? Uh, it mess I messed me up a little when I reverted the thing. It did a weird thing, but yeah. thankfully I have a stream that tells me exactly what I had. Mode. I need to wait to hit intern on my end? No, you go right ahead. Okay. I am done, right? I don't think there's anything else I... Yeah, activate. I think you're done. And then it should give you the points, which it did not do, which is what I was afraid of. So... Should I got three, four, five one, points? One, two, three. You get one per shrine. You control all three. Oh, one per shrine. Yep. Okay. And then, what else was in my hand? Doing this not quite the way it should have been. I had that, that, and that. And then I had one of these and one of those. Okay. My apologies for the mistake there. I believe my hand is now correct hit play all and shuffle that because I was looking at it to find the cards. My buttons all broke. Okay. So here is my stuff. My champions have extra power and movement. I can give another one of my guys more movement. My mechan initiate gets even more movement because I've played a mechan card. And someone has a cheaper command cost. So, what I need to do is equip the Bringer of Despair with the cheap command cost. I feel pretty confident in that. I have four power to work with, so two of it is going to be the Bringer of Despair. And then, let's see here. How confident am I in my ability to move him up? I am pretty confident in my ability to move him up this way. Okay, so that's my bringer with two. 
Then I'm gonna equip the Mechana Initiate, I think. One movement, two, three. I can probably do this with the Smithy, come to think of it. I will do it with the Smithy then. Let me double check his movement. He has three by default, four, five, and six from the flanking. One, two, three, four, five, six is enough to do what I need. Is his power enough? So he has three, four, five from the construct, five since I did bringer, so ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen from the flanking. Yeah, that's enough. All right, he will hit the Arha Templar. And you have no treasures, so that should be the end of the Arha Templar. And now I will finally get to show you the really cool thing about the smithy. So the smithy has this ability that after he attacks, every enemy champion adjacent to him gets moved away. So I get to bat your cultist back. I get to bat Mr. Dartha away. Huzzah. Yes, or... In fact, you know what? Mr. Dartha here, I want to bat him towards my guys. In fact, I want to do the same to the cultist. I want to bat them towards my own guys. I think that that is fair. I have one rune to spend and no more power. So I am done. And did it give me my point? It appears that I broke the score counter entirely. That's fine. So I gained one point. Okay. In fact, this I didn't gain one point. It might not have been broke, because this cultist needs to go away from the shrine, not just as close to me as possible. Now begin. I apologize. My smithy was a weird action there. That's no problem. Right. Yeah. Initiates. You still have Ooh. a discard pile. How are you doing this? I'm great at this game. And then I think the other thing I messed up was I messed up my shuffle timing, so I'm going to redo my shuffle timing here. I had an apprentice there. Hello. Uh, Uh, this bro, my champions get two plus attack, and I draw a card. to give a champion plus four and until you start commanding things you can wait to decide but then you'll officially play a void speaker when you start commanding well one champion gets plus four they all get plus two yep okay. so really one plus six they all get plus two They are all big and scary and terrifying, and I don't like it. We got four, five, six. Acquire a four class for free.
use this guy to require a Korite Mechadon. Solid. It's a forest adjacent to any forest. Yep. And you have five left to spend. Yeah, I'll get this wild bark nail. Why not? All right. I'll Where would you like to put your forest tile? Uh, where strategically would it be a good place? I guess I could like. You could put it down here and kind of lop off my access to this whole right shrine for the whole game. I'd have to go through a forest at some point. That sounds pretty good. And. uh this right one's giving you a lot of control points, so that's the most common place to put it. Uh, all right. Now I got two, two left. Correct. Look at the thicket familiar. Why not? Solid. And now... Or I got six power. Six power and a whole bunch of buffs. Uh, first things first, your R Ascara of the Fate is free to activate because you've played a Enlightened. That is true. And then Darth is free to activate, and then you just need to decide who's getting the extra four power to have a six buff. Gotcha. Uh, Pedron Smith is a seven defense. He sure is. Actually, he's a nine defense because he has a construct equipped. Oh. Four... All right, so Oof. I ask her a fate for free for Tim. Oh, okay. And Are you giving him the plus six then? Uh, that's a great question. If he goes up to ten, he can kill my nine. He's got six right now, so he'd take the Hadron Smithy to effectively three health. A Cultist is right now a four, so that would be enough to finish him off with a Cultist and an Ascara. Yeah. Your bringer of despair. What's what's that at? It's a seven, eight, no other buffs. Well, it's got a buff that it's easier for me to use. I think I will use my. I could use my. Is. Four it's without the void speaker.
And your smithy's at nine? Is My smithy's right? at nine. Oh, I could use of my power to move this cultist next to it as well. Yep. I, I'm going to do that. Alright. I'm going to apply strike back to him. So he'll feel, deal 5 damage back to the Ascara. And I have to double check whether he'll deal it back to the cultist or not. But I think it's just the one single combat moment. And I'm pretty sure it's just the Ascara that dies. I'm going to lose my Ascara as well? Yep. You're, lo usually, you're losing your smithy? Too? I sure am. Okay. My cultist stays there. Um, and I think I can apply the Void Speakers plus four attack. So that's six. Move my master Dartha over here. Sure can. It's ten. Is that enough to kill your bringer of despair? It is enough to kill my bringer of despair. And I just checked the wording on treasures. Treasures last until the end of turn. So the cultist also dies to the strike back, but okay. Adron's still gone. Bringer of Despair is still gone, which means both of my constructs are in my discard pile and make me sad. I rotate my Ascara of Fate? You sure do, but it won't matter much because at the end of your turn it'll reset since it died on your own turn. Okay. And then you used just two power on Occultist so far. Everything else I believe was free. And you had six total power, so you still have four power left to use. All of your guys are on the field, so either two cultists or the uh, flytrap that is not on the field. Or make the runic go over and pop my cultists just to get him out of here. Uh, that... I don't like it, but honestly, making sure I have no units anywhere near a control point probably wins you the game instantly. Yeah, I like the idea of booting your... so I, I can use that power to move him over. Yep, and then you have two left, so you can also put a cultist to play out or move this cultist closer to the shrine. Gotcha. I'll move a cultist out. Sounds good. Not great, but good. And then that should be that, and hopefully it gives you two. It did not, so plus one, plus two. Yeah, rewind time, I broke all sorts of stuff and then had to fix some things, and I should have rewound the time to fix the thing that I rewound time to break. Anyway. It's okay. At least we know what you're doing. I figured it out eventually, and I had a lot better ways I could have fixed it. All right. So for my turn, all of my champions have plus six damage and plus two movement. I have one, two, three to spend and six to kill. Why do they have plus six? Flanking Ascara, all my champions have plus three. And, you... and I have two of them. And then okay. plus one boot each. All right. So with my three, I'll buy the Templar Commander. It probably won't matter, but a free... Uh, command is spectacular with Bringer of Despair if I ever get the chance to use them. Pretty sure the game ends on your next turn, though. Alright, now with my 6 power, I have to do as much as I can. I have, in fact, played a Mechanic card. So my Mechan Initiate has plus 4 total boots for 7 movement. 7 movement is pretty great. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is not enough to kill your runic lycanthrope. I can go control the center, but you're all just going to converge on him from all sides. I can't reach Cetra because you put a forest in my way. And he does have enough power to kill Dartha. But 
So does the Shadow Caster, and I have six power to work with so I can command them both. Alright, Shadow Caster first. One, two, three. He'll snipe Master Dartha with his nine power. Which is enough to kill Master Dartha's eight. Goodbye, Dartha. I still grabbed that quickly, but luckily didn't hit anything. Then my Mechana initiate with his seven movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually want him to stay close to my side. Can make it to the center. Um, my one remaining power does nothing. My zero remaining runes, since I already bought, do nothing. I gain one victory point, tying us up at 12-12. If you can gain control of the center, you win. Yeah, so it's all about just... Getting rid of the mecha initiate and having a person in there, or getting two people adjacent. So what do you got to work with? Uh, well, let's find out. Uh, this guy draws me a card, because I do have an equipped champion, right? Sure do. Did my last hand have a Dogs of War I forgot to do my draw off of? He sure did. Oh. Totally forgot you about that. Have drawn two cards? Yeah, I could have drawn two cards, because I killed Master Dartha. Gotcha. But I think it's mostly a moot point. I think you've got me. Uh, let's see here. I so don't have went, anything more about a movement. Well, how much buying power did you end up with? A two and a free four? Uh, I was going to say, this deploy anywhere could be spectacular. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I don't have enough. But you, I don't, you have, enough don't have that because they don't combine. <laughs> really, it's either Shade of the Black Watch or Landfucker, right? Yep. Honestly, at this point, you might just do nothing, because risking flipping ambushes I can afford is scarier. Yeah, that's, that's true. Alright, so how much power am I working with? Two, three, three, four, five, six, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten's a ton of power. Did you play a lifebound card? You sure did. Did. Uh... Flytrap can't get in range, even of its ranged attack. One, two, three. Cetra's ranged, right? Yeah. So... Mechan the issue, it's a little tougher, right? Nope, he's only got three defense. He goes down like oh. a sack of potatoes. So why don't right, you move so Cetra in? Yeah, one, two, three. And then it shoots everything in range, which is just Mechan initiate. But gets me yep. out of the center. I can. So that was three one. of your ten power. You have seven to move the cultist forward and get the point. And, do and, that and just now you game, have right? five. Well, you got to move this cultist up. And then you have three left. But boom, three points. Game yeah. over. That was you fun. win. Well, you know, I you held my hand through the victory. Oh, so. not really. Come on. Never. I think like twice I pointed out something that you were missing that was important, and twice I actually didn't. There was a time you moved this runic lycanthrope up to hit my guy and kill him up here. Instead, you had Arha Templar. You could have commanded Arha Templar, killed one of my little dudes, and commanded him anyway, and still did that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that um... I let you miss that exactly one time. Like halfway through the game that I could uh, get a free command by killing somebody with him. I pointed out the first time or two that it was possible, and then I let you miss it once. Yeah. So enough. I didn't super hold your hand. That's good. I think uh, the Void Initiate and those other... Uh... Your Void Initiate never missed on being in the second hand of a shuffle, which was great. <laughs> Uh, no, the first time I played it, I, I, I had to banish something. You're right. The very first yeah. time, you had to banish one from hand and took a four instead of a five by. But then after that, he hit pile. like three times in a row on discard pile only. Oh, let's see here. I had... 